Oh yeah, this is the one that I was having to really show you first. It's uh, one of my favourite ones, the David Malangi Mortuary Ceremony. Yeah, it looks familiar. Yeah, this is the one on the dollar note. This is what we'll use when they're teaching. This is a whole section called Teacher, the way the exhibition is designed. But I mean, David Malangi was in um, those really early influential shows in the 80s. You know, his work is also in the Aboriginal Memorial at the entrance to the National Gallery of Australia. And Matt, I love the idea that this was portable art. It was on money, it was in people's pockets. They had, um, you know, a visual knowledge of it. So I guess, you know, maybe it created some receptiveness to Indigenous art. Yeah, that actually blows you away when you think about it, isn't it? People say they don't recognise Aboriginal art or know much about it, but they carried it around with them, <laughs> spending it, seeing it every day. And did the Reserve Bank of Australia get permission to reproduce this imagery? Uh, no, when this one was recommissioned, it shows you how much things had turned around. There was a compensation that was paid for him, which I think was a fishing boat, a shotgun, and like $1,500, which some said he was actually pretty happy with at the time. But, you know, considering, you know, the deeper story of appropriation of, you know, important Aboriginal designs, when you're looking at it, how does it make you feel? You know, I think it makes me curious. I want to identify, you know, what is going on, um, you know, all the different parts, of how they how they speaking to one another, how they communicating. But okay, let's have a look at something else though too. Great. And this is another amazing work by David Malangi as well. It just represents so many intersections of that northern part of Australia. You know, for hundreds of years before British colonisation, Macassan traders were turning up all along the northern coast of Australia. Yeah, so there's a lot of trade that's happening at this time. It's huge what's going on between the northern parts of Australia. And Matt, can you tell me more about the sale? One of the things that was introduced to our communities along the northern coastline of Australia was sailing technologies. The Macassans were traders who sailed here in those uh, times. Um, and the knowledges and information that they shared with the Yolnu um, and that the Yolnu adopted into their customary practices of boat building and making and things like that are uh, knowledges that have been shared for hundreds of years between Yolnu and Macassan people. No, I'm really interested. You're very excited about this work. Um, you know, I think these are really important stories that need to be told. Yeah, is that weird? It's like it's sort of a curatorial thing too, to actually put a boat in an exhibition. It's actually something I've never actually had the chance to do before. All right, Stephen, let me show you one more thing. Matt, this looks great. What are we looking at? Two sections of the Jalkari uh, Yurikala exhibition, which is the 1946-1947 bark painting assemblage. So Matt, what's so special about this particular collection? A lot of people don't realise that the Yurikala community members who were working in 1946-47 when these bark paintings were being assembled were also actively involved in Australia's war effort. Um, they worked as coast watchers. Um, they're the early form of what today is called Norforce, um, which is an Aboriginal unit within the Australian Army. The two of the predominant family groups in the whole exhibition are the Marikas and the Unipingus, and there was a lot of Marikas and Unipingus who also served in the World War II effort as well. Uh, one of those sort of family groups is an artist, Narajan Maimuru, and Narajan was one of the soldiers who was involved in the 1943 Patricia Cam bombing, which was off the coast of Yurikala was the reason the radar tower was built in Yurikala and after World War II that radar tower was dismantled and the artists actually chopped different sections of that radar tower masonite and used it as this. I mean you can't actually get bark off a tree at any time of the year, there's only particular seasons where you can do that. Well thank you so much for showing me through the exhibition. Not a problem.